Now this is a topic that I did not have on my bingo card for today, but since it is something that a lot of people are talking about, we are going to cover it from a few different angles, try to see what is going on, try to make some sense out of it, and be respectful at the same time, realizing that this is a very sensitive subject, something that a lot of people have experienced and unfortunately many people suffer from. Let's get into it. Well, hey guys, welcome back. And this is a very, this is more of a serious topic, I would say, than a lot of what I typically cover. A lot of times we talk about people in Hollywood and celebrities and the entertainment industry, even some political stuff, things that revolve around people who many, many of us don't ever really interact with on our day-to-day -day lives. Well, unfortunately, somebody that I personally have interacted with, and I'm sure many of you have as well, YouTuber Nick Ricada and his wife are currently in jail for possession. This was, a, this was a news that broke about six hours ago. I'm not sure if this is still the current status. I have no idea if Nick's out of jail. I have no idea if he and his wife and this other person, April Imholt, are out of jail. But what we're seeing happening before our very eyes is a very strange, very sad situation. And I want to start off by saying I have no ill will towards Nick or anybody in this situation. I'm just uh, you know, commenting on this from the outside. I've had pleasant interactions with Nick on Twitter. Uh, we follow each other. I've He's shared some things in the DMs that I figured I thought were pretty insightful. Just in general, he's been a very nice, supportive person of me personally. He's shouted me out to try to get some extra YouTube followers back in the day. So um, in general, I've had good interactions. I know that that doesn't speak for everybody. And I get that. And I'm not saying that that has necessarily any testament about his personal life or his conduct, you know, therein. But what we have now is a man who has been plagued by what has been obviously an alcohol, an alcoholism issue um, over the past several months, if not years, that, that has seemed to progressively only get worse. And unfortunately for Nick, it has led to him and his wife, as well as this other person, April Imholt, who has been living with them reportedly, I mean, allegedly. I don't know for sure that she's been staying with Nick and his wife. But the situation here, as Umbrella Guy shares, it says Nick Rikita has been arrested. It's like I said yesterday, he's crashing and people will, will cheerlead you to the bottom. I hope he gets his shit sorted and his kids are one, safe, and two, uh, this doesn't impact him having them. If he needs rehab and help, plenty of people will. And I'm sure it's not a matter of, you know, necessarily finances for like uh, rehab or anything. Although I do know Nick is going through a hard time due to the fact that he has a defamation lawsuit, which he was trying to have settled or thrown out, I believe. And then it, apparently it's going to continue to discovery and cost him tens of thousands more dollars. Again, I'm, I'm aware of these things, but I don't spend every waking hour of my life obsessing about this man. I've just, <laughs> he's somebody I, I've watched his old YouTube videos in the past. I don't really catch his live streams, but once in a while I'll tune in. Um, but this is just a sad situation. You see a lot of people like Carrie Smith, that Star Wars girl, J3PO. Uh, a lot of people are, are coming in to support him, just saying, hey, get some help. We'll pray for you, and hopefully things get better. Um, a lot of people have even suspected maybe he's been taking Ozempic, gone vegan, drugs. And again, I think this is a lot of wild uh, hypothesis or you know theories. But in, you know, in the reality, if you have an alcohol problem, you're not sleeping properly, if you don't have a good diet, healthy lifestyle, you can pretty quickly go from th looking like this to looking like this over the course of a year. I had a, a three-month flare-up with Crohn's disease a couple years back. And losing 10 pounds and not sleeping at night and not having any food in your stomach for about two months straight, you'll look like death. I looked like I was about ready to keel over. So any number of environmental factors can contribute to somebody looking like that. But what we have seen is him progressively get from June of last year looking like this to Advantages. where it is we'll let it play for a certain point neutral. of time. Just give it a second. The goodness and the badness is always in your context. If you are not someone who should be drinking, do not drink. If you're able to drink, enjoy it. If you're able to drink now and not able to drink later, then stop. If you need to take a break, take a break. That's on you. That's on you. Your life is in control. This substance does not control you. Boy, that, that's a very sad thing to hear him say because obviously... I mean, it sounds like something an addict would say, and I feel bad for Nick in, in some, you know, aspect. I do think people need to be held accountable for their own actions, and I, I do not like the fact, and you'll see in a second, that people are blaming other people for contributing to his downfall. Unfortunately, as a 
you know, as a grown adult man, especially married with kids, you have to be responsible for your own choices. But what I really wanted to focus on is you'll see the, the change from June of last year to May of this year, and it's frightening. Neither does anyone's opinion about any substance. This, ice cream, whatever it is, do what is right for you. And here he is now. And, and I, I realized that this here, bad lighting, he looks exhausted, whatever. You know, if you let your beard go, you can look really bad too. But the reality is there's been a lot of uh, abuse, you can tell, going on behind the scenes. And it's culminated to where we are now. So now we're seeing people like Yellow Flash saying, please let this be a wake-up call. We've got legal vices coming out supporting him, saying this is likely the one and only public statement I'm going to make about it. It's a sad situation. I deal with my personal relationships privately. Please respect that. And I think that's a very that's a very forthright way of being. He's not going to air Nick's dirt. And I think that's very honorable, to be fair. Um, you have people like this guy, the Dragon's Treasure. I don't know if he personally knows Nick. He might not know him any more than I do. But apparently he's been friendly with Nick for a while and he made this video trying to wake Nick up, I guess, trying to help, you know, shake him free of whatever this is. Again, I don't know. I, you can be as honest with Nick as you want to at this point. You can make a YouTube video like I'm doing about it, just kind of talking about this, trying to figure out what's going on. Or you can call him out and tell him, you know, you're drunk and you need to get help. But unless Nick really wants to deal with this, nothing's going to change that. Unfortunately, Memeology, a channel that I do follow on YouTube... Uh, he's playing the blame, uh, blame game, and a lot of people are doing the same thing. He says, I'm going to say it like it is. Rakita sounds himself, uh, surrounds himself with certain edgelords who just love when everything around them goes to shit. They thrive on it. One of them is a fat F who loves cuties. I really uh, believe that at least contributed to his downward spiral. I hope he gets clean back on YouTube. Now, he's talking about Video Comedy and Dick Masterson, two people that have been, you know, uh, friendly with Nick, not friendly with Nick. You know, this is that whole comics gate, Eric July, Ethan Ralph, uh, Ethan Van Skyver, Vito Comedy, uh, Geeks and Gamers. Uh, you know, the whole thing, the entire group of these people who are constantly online attacking each other or fighting each other over whatever. And again, I have no dog in this fight, okay, guys? This is not me condemning or, or condoning any of them. <laughs> it's just sad that this has devolved into essentially people blaming other people for the reason that nick has made these choices that have put him in the situation that he's in we even have people like like again this is the clip that he's talking about where dick masterson kind of jokes about how he doesn't value friendship right uh, they're going after nick now it's breaking my heart here yeah, and talking about it nick, why is nick why are you going to nick ricada because he's friends with dick that's the stupidest thing in the world you guys are attacking i mean first of all you got it's not going to work secondly you guys are attacking things that uh, I don't value mm. like friendships. Right. <laughs> Again, I, th he's not being serious. He goes on to say he hopes Nick gets help. There. You know, you're not going to be friends with Dick anymore. Ah, oh, we got you. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I like friendships. <laughs> yeah. I'm but, not... you know, I don't need them. Right. <laughs> I'm just, I love Nick. I'm just kidding. I think it's sad. I that feel that bad that he's whole... getting shit. I, I, as I always say, and again, people will use that and say, oh, see, he just doesn't care about his friend Nick. Look, guys, I don't like Dick Masterson. I don't personally like his personality. I don't believe he has any ill intent towards Nick, okay? <laughs> Sometimes people are just crass, and that's how they are. We had people sharing this thing where Eric July came out saying that he we would offer to give him help, but even after Nick has gone after him... Ethan Van Skyver saying, I don't care if Rakita is ill. He absolutely exposed Eric July. This is some disgusting behavior. Basically saying that um, Eric is saying nothing more than Nick is dishonest and overrated, stupid, and haha. He's losing his defamation case. Anyhow, anyhow, I'll pay for his rehab. And then he goes on to say Eric's a piece of crap. I'm like, this isn't about any of you guys. If you care about Nick Rakita, fine. Do the, the right thing and tell him I'm here for you. If you, if you need support, fine. But then it gets even weirder with this whole rabbit hole of what's going on with Nick, because we have this guy, Aaron M. Holt, who has his own YouTube channel, uh, Steel Toe in the Morning, Steel Toe Report. I can't remember what it's called. Never heard of him before, but he's apparently a really big YouTuber, so kudos to him. The woman that was arrested with Nick and his wife happens to be his ex-wife. Now, he's got some very strong accusations for Nick, and this was from his live stream earlier today when this whole thing broke. I remember Nick ripping. Keep in mind, ex-husband of the wife who was arrested after she had been living with, I believe, allegedly living at Nick in his wife's house. I remember Nick ripping two massive fucking rails right in front of me, and I literally put my hand on his shoulder, and I said, dude, dude, you need to fucking chill. I'm worried 
that you're going to fucking die. No, no, don't worry. It's okay. I've read up about this a lot. I can show you all the literature and everything else. It's okay because it doesn't all hit you right at once. And it, I'm just like, what the fuck? Uh, another time I told him, I go, this guy, like, I'm worried about this. I remember telling him one time, I go, my fucking wife is doing cocaine a lot, dude. How the fuck do we stop this? And he goes, you have to understand. Instead of going, holy shit, you're right. I, we, we've got families. This is a fucking problem. He goes, you have to understand, sometimes people have stress levels that are up here, and their minds can only handle this much stress. And then when you do the stimulant, it bumps you up like this, and then you can handle more stress. I'm like, Nick, you fucking lunatic. Lower your stress levels. Again, uh, that if true, again, if true, it kind of plays into the whole idea that Nick has just been kind of living wild and free and loose with the drugs and the alcohol and everything else, which is unfortunate to see again. But there's also been a lot of things over the years talking about Nick possibly being into some weird stuff. And then you have videos like this come out where people are sharing that Aaron uh, and Nick. I, well, well, I'm just going to play the video. You can watch for yourself. This is the four of them. Aaron, his wife, Nick, and his wife in the hot tub. By the way, this one. I would give you a pass. Doesn't like me very much. Mm -mm. Oh, he's bad. I don't. Not going well. I I only got into I only got into this house because of this one here. Absolutely. Oh, I'm charming. These never these two are friends. He and I, a lot of weird homosexual friction <laughs> that we're both denying. Definitely. Do you want to read this so. name right here? It's, it's only friction because he doesn't Where's like Sid? Luke. What, what did Sid have? Oh, no. By the way, this one. Again, I don't know if this is anything. People are trying to use this as if this is some sort of own. Unfortunately, the reality is there's been a lot of uh, factors that have led up to this moment. And the reality is none of us are ever really, really going to know. And this is kind of why I, I think for me that the teachable moment here is. So if you didn't know, this guy, Aaron, and his wife actually had a YouTube channel. They were both like co-hosts on the on the live stream. So for me personally, I look at this and go with all this drama, all these people fighting each other over who's to blame, who's right, who's wrong and all this stuff. Rather than just saying, hey, either you like Nick or you don't, you support him or you don't, you want to hope to see he gets better or you just don't care, fine. These people have all turned it into their own personal little war against each other. And this is what makes me feel more like just staying a loner in all of this stuff in life. In life, in YouTube, it's like you can have your really good friends in real life, but with people that you don't know online, um, they might be your friend one minute and stab you in the back the next. All I know is, personally, just from my little bit of interactions with Nick, look, I don't know what he and his wife are into, if they were in some sort of polyamory thing, or if it's there's actual drugs and alcohol both being used at the same time, or what, everything else. It's, supposedly, he was arrested for possessing a firearm and drugs, so now if he has firearms, that's gonna make it even worse for him. I hope the best for the guy. I mean, honestly, I don't have any issues with Nick. Like I said, we've been friendly online. I just think that this whole thing is tragic that people are using it as ammunition towards their ideological enemies when it comes to this whole comics gate ripperverse, Vito versus every other YouTuber. You know, it's, it's sad. These people, should probably like unplug for a few days, get over themselves, and just realize, hey, this guy's life is getting torn apart here in front of all of, all of us. And whether or not it's his own fault, which it truly is, it is sorry, it is Nick's fault for this all happening. Um, it's sad that they're using it in this constant bickering match they have with each other. So I'm gonna leave it right there. Let me know what you guys think about all this, share your thoughts down below, and I will catch you guys later. All right, and if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. Thank you for being here. I do have two channels, Minimal Effort Podcast, as well as my gaming channel. I do have a Twitch and Kick for my gaming channel. We do live streams over there occasionally, maybe once a week. And then if you are in the market for a new PC, make sure to check out Meta PCs. Click the link I have down below. Use code TEBO at checkout for a special discount. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.